Welcome to the Meaningful People Podcast, the podcast where we talk to people who are meaningful. Yeah, that sounds good. Guys, you clicked on it. <laughs> wow. That was a weird start. Guys and girls, it's true. This is our last episode of the year. Of the year. <laughs> Don't worry, we're still around. <laughs> we're not going anywhere. Nope. We'll be back, but Ezra Sashem, pretty soon for yeah. another season of Meaningful People podcast. I know you got a little bit nervous thinking, yeah. oh my gosh. Sorry for that clickbait. Listen, it had to work because <laughs> you are here. You're going to shut it off now. No, 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 don't shut it off. It's, we have great stuff coming up. We'll see how this episode goes. It might be our last one. <laughs> it's going to be great. So uh, similar to what we did last week, if you didn't listen to last week, pause this and go back and listen. Um, we delved into our first 16 episodes last week, and now we're going to delve into our last 16, giving you a little more behind the scenes, a few of our thoughts, and a few moments that happened after that uh, really moved either Nachi or myself. So we're going <laughs> to jump right in. We're going to start with Mrs. Shimi Adar. Did I say her name correctly no, this you, time? No, you definitely did. And I think um, one of, one of the, the great things to mention about this guest and and this episode is, first of all, I apologize to her. It was like 150 degrees <laughs> in this office when we were recording. I was looking back at that episode recently. We were For those who listened to it, you heard us talk about it. But for those who watched it, you literally saw us sweating. And uh, Mrs. Miss Jimmy was was like nine and a half months pregnant at that point, and she actually had a baby three days later. It's crazy. She had a baby girl. Yeah, three days later. So I always saw her like on social media or just around, or you go to the, like you know a a I don't say bar mitzvah, not bar mitzvah, like a bas mitzvah. Like she's always around by simchas and stuff like that. And I didn't really know who she was, but obviously we did our research, and the more I I learned who she is i'm like okay this is gonna be a great episode and she was great she was really really like she gets it she does she's also like i, I had spent pesach with her last year or two years ago i'm not sure at this point <laughs> uh, i think i was home last pesach but um she's like an energizer bunny hmm. and it happens to be that pesach she's also like nine months pregnant she had a baby a day after <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's she's always pregnant and she's always doing amazing things still yeah and it's Despite. so funny because when we were walking her out of the of the building after that episode she couldn't like walk down the block oh, without every single every single girl just like making eye contact and trying to get a picture with her. And she was so she's very like she's great at it. She's Funny like, that she came in a tutu though. I think did she? Yeah, totally. I don't remember that part. She was wearing like a shimutu jump. I think she was wearing like a tutu. Maybe she's coming from like a bus. No, probably not. She. No, I think she's coming from home. <laughs> really? <laughs> she's always in a tutu. Uh, but she was very good, and it wasn't. It was. She wasn't just like all about like you got to be positive. Like it, there was also a lot of like deep messages there. Uh, which a lot of times you you kind of hear a lot of like positive people and they're they're all often fluffy. Um, I don't think she's fluffy at all. No, um, I think she gets it, and uh, it was yeah, just a really great episode. She's as real as it gets. Moving on, Rabbi to- Y Y Rubenstein, all the way from Scotland. This guy, this rabbi over here, bit by a lion, <laughs> survived a plane crash. The queen got the invited. Queen. Got inv- got invited to the to the. Buckingham Palace by the Queen. I, I while he while he was talking, I'm like, this is for sure our wildest episode. There's yeah. just there's so many things happening and there's a lot of emotions going on in there also. And I see him by I, I saw him this morning. I see him by Davening. Right. Davin Chakras together. Right. And and, and I think uh, we had mentioned in a different recording somewhere else, but there was a moment in this episode where he he lost his father at a very young age. And he had, you know, he was whatever he was watching this, you know, BBC documentary, and he ended up he ended up seeing his father on that, yeah, like as like a you know in the background. And when he described that, that was that was yeah. that was super intense. That was so real. That I, that till this day is uh, still my favorite moment from all these Seriously. episodes. Yeah, not not that other moments aren't amazing, but just I don't know what it was, but it was like him saying that. Like he didn't expect to see his father. He was watching a random documentary, and he meant like the way he's describing his father. Like it, it I got obviously I got instant chills and him crying about it. Yeah. And it was also like right after him like saying about a funny crazy story about how he got yeah. bit by a lion, and it was like whoa, just wasn't ready for it. It, it. it felt to me like again, everyone has their own different moments, but for me, I don't know. It felt like of the most real moments we've ever had with someone. That's always our our goal is to get to get a guest to cry. Like yeah. we have like an onion section in the office, like in the corner, just in case like the content isn't right. juicy enough. We have someone just slicing onions. It's sometimes hard though with uh, certain like episodes. You're like, 
We're not getting David Bashevkin to cry. We're not getting Shimmy Adar to cry. You know, like it's not. Besides for the heat, you know. Like. <laughs> but but um, overall, yeah, that's always because I, I think I think we we've mentioned this in the past that it's it's really about getting you know people to open up and tell their stories and to really be comfortable. Yeah. Uh, something that we do also is we do ask every single guest, and I'm very proud of doing this. That we say, what's something you don't want us to talk about? Right, um, and, and we're not going to right now talk about all those things. <laughs> but, although that would be great. Yeah, that would be very juicy. <laughs> uh, but but no, like like and certain people said like oh what, like there's certain guests and like oh I thought you just like no they didn't want to go down that route and it's like why not talk about it? like that's not our goal here. It's not like it's not hawk. It's not hawk. I mean, obviously there's certain things that come up that are like it's hawk. But if they want to talk about it, we'll talk about it. If they don't want to talk about it, like the goal to make everyone feel comfortable if they have something in the back of their mind. Um, so I'm thinking no, but but very usually though most people say you could talk about anything. Yeah, I think very few times someone said to us like, "Oh, this is something I don't want to talk about." Right. And I think we respect those boundaries very very well. Yeah, yeah. We no. don't we don't cross that. I think that the the next episode, the Rabbi Shlomo and and Mrs. Hani Bachner, um, one of my favorite episodes we've ever put out. Yeah definitely uh, on youtube it's the most it's it's the highest viewed episode yeah so i got thirty one thousand views on youtube if they're listening as of today i'm saying they could yeah, be listening in five I mean, years it's, it's all 50. up to a million views so that was our first double epi- double person episode yeah um which was a little of a challenge talking to two people at the same time trying to give both of them the proper like covered and attention yeah but i thought they were they were great at like it, it was very nice to see their relationship I you know when they walked men- yeah I mentioned, you mentioned you, when they walked out right I mentioned like from from the first second that we met them and it was obviously our first time meeting them we right. had, we had heard of Bonio and we know what we know what they do but we never had met the people behind it and when I met them there was something about them that was so refreshing they were like so young yeah you know um they're like a young couple <laughs> really um and and their story is so incredible what what you know what they go through what they've been through but also what they do they really sacrificed as if they you know as if they didn't sacrifice enough obviously it wasn't a sacrifice they made not to have children it right. wasn't a choice they made right but you know so they, they very it, easily could have just quote unquote given up say okay this is not our future and and go on together with their regular business but right and, and they really you know and in and in that episode he describes how he does not have peace yeah. ever because even when he's on vacation, if you can even call it vacation, or even when he's sleeping, or Shabbos, or Yantif, his mind is always racing. Did I get back to that person? Did I answer this person? That organization, Boating Oman, is dealing with such, like, it's just life. It's just life. They're literally bringing life into the world, and and um, things are so time-sensitive, you know? So, so with them specifically, um, right, I remember we're discussing, like, Boating Olam, everyone knows Rai Bachner, and we 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 heard that that Mrs. Bachner, she says she's like I'm not Rebison. Okay, so Mrs. Bachner, she we also heard that she's part of the story. And as as people, if you listened, great. If you didn't listen, go listen to it. But like the story about I think it was Ervium Kipper, like she blocked him from the door. Yeah, I'm getting chills thinking about it. But um, we we knew that they are they're, they're Hasidish, and we knew it would may, might be a challenge to have both of them on at the same time. Um, but we like Baruch Hashem with the help of Baruch and Bone Olam and Baruch we, Holberger, yeah. we, we had both of them on and it's it I think it would have been wrong to just have him on yeah and it's, especially because she it was her idea yeah and, and it was mentioned in, in the episode how yeah. how Mrs. Bachner started Bone Olam and, and the, the thing you alluded to is that Ervin Kipper she blocked him from leaving their house and said I need you to join me this year it's crazy and he agreed at that at that moment can you imagine if can you imagine if they if they didn't do what they do? Can you imagine if they they left that doctor's appointment where they were told that they can't have kids? Can you imagine if they left and they just said like, you know, let's just whatever we're gonna go and we, we're gonna just live our lives in the business, which they uh, you know they, they to answer in. your question, I could imagine it, but but it, but it'd be wild. I, I know you're trying to say nine thousand. Yeah. There are over nine thousand yeah. children at Boney Olm. I think we mentioned on that episode two healthy babies a day. That's what Boney Olm is responsible so for. Crazy. It's like a crazy stat, and they should continue yes. with much health and atzlacha to continue, and they shouldn't they shouldn't have to continue. Right, everyone should be able to, um, you know have what they need in everything but but the work that they do is incredible and the people who they are is incredible their story is unbelievable you sound like you're a fan of bone i'm a fan i'm a fan of 
I'm a fan of people taking the sour, the sourest, the sourest, is that a word? The sourest of lemons and turning it into like lemonade that's like good and tasty. Like they took the worst, the worst thing in their life and they really, right. That's they, a good they, point. they turned it into in so much light and happiness. You know, I don't think we'll ever know me or you or anyone how they really, really feel deep down. Right. I think, I think it's just, it's hard. None of us should know, but. But they do it. They do it, and, they, and and I think everyone listening should like, if you meet them, you should get a bracha from them because, because mm. like we should have got a bracha from we them. We should have. <laughs> okay, I'm Ma- such a hypocrite. Ma- maybe if we have, the- okay, well, no, you didn't think about it, but maybe if I we know. have them back on, who knows? Yeah, we'll get a bracha. But yeah, no, they they are a special special people, and what they're doing. Vzk for the- life. Yeah, vzk life. Go ahead. And- yeah, if you want to contribute financially to their cause, then yeah, go for it. And I think something cool that we mentioned, not to, not to harp on it too long, is something I, I on this episode. I I I wanted to like get a straight answer from them. Let's say Bonnie Olm is you know annual budget at that at the time where we recorded this episode was around 10 11 million dollars a year that that goes directly towards everything they need to make these things happen and i asked them if you got another 10 million dollars a year would that translate into more life into more children being born and it was answered with like a straight resounding yes of right. course the right. research we're able to do and and you know the treatments we're able to fund yeah they 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 said it a wild amount of people who can't have children could be resolved with treatment, which is very expensive. And, and the that's research what they cover. and the research yeah, they to, do to help. Yeah, I mean, it's it's if someone lived in 1970, then listened to that episode or just understand what Boniolam does, they'll be like, "What? Like these things are possible?" And in the past few years, you know, technology is very bad, obviously, but it also there's a lot of good with technology. And uh, it makes me sad a little bit to think about to think about so many couples who grew up in let's say the 50s well, that's what or, the, or said. the 60s when, and when we asked him who's one who's people he wanted to meet he wanted to meet not people so we could like schmooze with them he wanted to meet with them to tell them like hey, Lava, i could help like you Lava have Chirabo, children. who never had children yeah yeah all the people he mentioned yeah. the first person he mentioned by the way someone pointed out did have children but they died i forgot the person but they died in the war uh, they all got killed in the war and then his right. next uh, his next marriage, he didn't have children with. And it's, um, imagine, but it's just imagine Boni was around when he was when he, when when Rabbi when Shlomo and Chani Bachner were young young married right, couple. Right, right. That's but true. hey, listen, you know we can't go back. Baruch Hashem, they're doing incredible stuff. Until we have our, our guest, and meaningful people, the guy who invented the time machine. <laughs> yes, that, be, then then we'll go. That would be really good. The, Moving on to Mister Saul Shlomo Werdiger. Saul Shlomo. So. Um, I th- I found it very funny how that episode started. Where the first thing you asked Yaka was like, "So you're not Hasidish?" And he's like, <laughs> "Excuse me." Yeah, yeah. He's I super, completely am. Okay, I was <laughs> off on that. He, he's, Last name was Werdiger. Yeah, yeah. No, he is Hasidish. He's he's obviously very Heimish. He has what to do with every Rebbe, um, as this. as he mentioned a lot of stories. And there, I know there are more stories which we even said on it that like, okay, we we really need to have you back. Um, but a lot of a lot of people reached out. They really liked uh, this episode because it was a very different angle. It was, I think, our first like official quote unquote businessman yeah. um, who's been on. And obviously, there's a lot of very you know giving businessmen who who were in talks with a few of them to come on, um, and a businesswoman. Mm. Um, but but uh, all in all, it, it's. I don't really identify him as a businessman because he's 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 the he is a I don't say the force but he's one of the m- biggest forces behind the Gada. Yeah. Uh, obviously, during this whole COVID period, he's been he was up night and day to to make sure that uh, camps could open. And obviously, it didn't work out exactly the way he wanted to. But it doesn't mean that his all his hard work and effort uh, didn't go into it. And uh, I thought. I thought he just he gave over all those stories very well. Yeah, he he did a great job at that, and and he's he's an extremely busy person. So we're so you know happy and thankful that he took the time time out. Thank thank you to his his uh, grandson. 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 His son-in-law. Son-in-law. Who I had a son. A, who I don't know who you're thinking. All the people who helped us. Yeah, who yeah. Helped us. Uh, shout out to Abrami, Mayor Penny. Shout out to Mayor Shatner for for hooking it up. Really, and Abrami, and Abrami. Um, but 
I, I, I was just happy that he called out Cuomo in that episode a bit. <laughs> uh, that's like honestly that was something gosh. that made but me people happy. People not from New York are like, what are you talking about? Oh no, that's not true. First of all, yeah, you think everyone's people? got a connection to New York. Second of uh, all, second of all, uh, Cuomo. Eh. <laughs> not to get all political. Oh, you're getting but very I'm just political. Happy that that like um, he did that, and uh, I think going into this episode, I was a little bit nervous because like. I was intimidated? a little bit intimidated right. by by him, and I never not not actually not that he's intimidating. I'd never met him. Right, right. You hear his name. We've heard his right. name always. Such, so many people talk about, you know, Saul Werdiger with such like reverence. So I got you know like oh so nervous, but he's such a nice guy. Yeah, he's and a very nice so, person. So just like so friendly. Yeah, and he um, he personally, if you didn't listen to the last episode, I just had a baby. He personally yeah. reached out to me to say miles. No way, that's yeah. so nice. I thought it was very nice, and like I met him once over here, and he's like, yeah. no, no, I still. No, it's, it's fine. I, I had I had bumped into him a couple months after our episode, and he like gave me a hug, and he was really so friendly, so yeah. friendly. So guys, don't be intimidated. If you see him, just go give him a bear hug oh, in the gosh. street. Oh man, now we're gonna get like. But he he for that. he's he's yeah. The, the and he has a mustache. Yeah, I I'm a big fan of mustache. You know, we spoke about Yoel Gold, who by the way reached out to me. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, because he's so happy that he won like one of the best yarmulkes in Cholesterol. Oh, he, Although he there's like, there's sort of like a I think there's like a top three. I think we can go Yoel Gold, um, Rabbi Yoel Gold, Rabbi Yoel Gold, Rabbi, Eli, Rabbi Eli Mansour. Really, you got like yeah, a super bowl that's like really good, and. Rabbi Ephraim Goldberg, we'll get to him a little bit later on, but he, honestly, yeah, underrated. With underrated. His, with his, his sure. yarmulke. His game is is strong. That's true. Tr- in terms of mustache game, oh. Saul Werdiger. I mean, does anybody- <laughs> I hope he's not listening. He'll be like, "This is so weird." <laughs> is it? I don't know, but it is. I mean, I, I happen to love mustaches, and he <laughs> he he did he did bring he. I don't remember exactly, but he said with one of the rebbes. No, that there's a reason why. It's he a did, thing. Yeah, he didn't know because he wasn't. He didn't grow a beard. Right. So this rebbe told him at least keep the mustache. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it is a thing. So um, call a vote to him. Talking about beards and mustache, our next guest that we had on, Doctor Rabbi Doctor Benji Epstein, Great PhD. Segue. Great segue. He, you know, when he was on our podcast, you know, he got like a, a little. It was trimmed well. Mm-hmm. If you bump into him now in Israel, <laughs> he's yeah. he's he's growing that thing his out. His beard got long. His beard got long. And, I, and he's a guest who I'm probably like, I don't know how to think about all of them, but he's one, one of the most, he's one of the guests that I'm in touch with the most. I was going to say that since, also. Since our, since our episode with also. him. Like I, I don't recall really, maybe here and there we would chat before we did an episode with him. But afterwards, he's someone, you know, he, you know we're, we're discussing present. like different, yeah, he's very oh. present. We're discussing like different ideas and he, he stays on me. Every morning I wake up to a message from him. Yeah, and he's, he's on top. That of episode was literally a free therapy session, I feel. It was. It was super relaxing. Yeah. Therapeutic. And he is. Did you read his book yet? Yeah. Did you really or no? Yeah. <laughs> no, you didn't read his book. Yeah. Okay. Everyone. There's not enough Shabbos. Everyone, if Shabbos. you bump into Nachi, because Nachi bumps into so many people, if you bump into Nachi, tell him like, no, read his book. Because it, it's awesome. I myself, I didn't finish it yet. My, my it's mo- a safer. It really my, is a safer. It's not like you'll just read it in one sitting. Like you have to like, I le- I actually lent it to my friend. How happens to my mother-in-law. Okay. She she read she read the book. My mother-in-law listened to the episode and then she she bought she his book it. and then she read the book. So I think like I'm Yotze. No, you're not Yotze. You have to read his book. It's, it's awesome. And um, mindfulness. That's like mindfulness is is like the future medicine. Right. It's the present day medicine. Yeah. See what I did there. But definitely, if you guys didn't listen to that episode, and maybe if you're a little bit like anxious and stuff, listen to that episode. It, it, it's such good vibes. Yeah. Great practical, you know, tips. Yeah, he's so good. He's and so good. um. That was, I had a lot of fun with that. <laughs> Rabbi Ephraim Goldberg. Now we can talk about his yarmulke for a minute. For our sure. most wired guest. Our most I wired guest, that. as we call him. Also, our guest that has a podcast of his own right. behind, behind the Bima. Um, Rabbi Ephraim Goldberg is the Rav of BRS, Boca Raton Synagogue. Because <laughs> in the intro for that, I, I did RBS, must, yeah. which is Ramapi Chemish. But he, he's got a huge kahila. I, I, like, what is it, 1,500 members that they have out there? He has a huge kahila, and he's also doing a million things. Like he 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 has so many shirim online. He has he's running his whole shul, and he's very organized. Also, like yeah. the way he does them. Yeah, um, definitely. Our he's the only guest that actually got here before us. We had and actually, you know, we were here, but we walked down to greet him, but he already came up through right, the elevator. Right, so like we walked in, and he was already sitting here, right? And he was like ready to roll, and oh we were just gosh. like, okay, let's let's just do this. Yeah, he's very he's very on top of it. Um. Yeah, he was very good. And you just reminded me, I know at a certain point, 
Um, it's going back a little, but we're just talking about communities. Like, obviously, he's not the only Rav in Florida. I mean, he has the biggest kahila there, but there's other shuls there also. But I, I just remembering, I know in the Rabbi Ari Dembi episode, I think we put a very big focus on like, Rabbi Ari Dembi, you're the Rav of Omaha. Right. And and I think he forgot to mention because I know he's close with the Chabad there. There, is, there, a, there is there is a Chabad. Yeah. In, there is a Chabad in um, in Nebraska. It's run by Rabbi Mendel and Shani Katzman. I think they've been there since like 1986. Yeah. There's also happens to be Chabad houses in South Dakota, North Dakota, and in Iowa. So you know, usually usually any guests we're ha- any rub we're having on, we we're focusing in on them and their their part in the community yeah. and here and there we, we do sometimes tend to forget to mention there are other people there we definitely want to that mention that. that we'll we'll have on one day you know who, whoever it is um and speaking about like other communities i want to yeah. just talk really quickly about a sponsor for this episode yeah j finder guys if you ever are looking for a house to rent to buy you maybe sometimes go on zillow.com but there's this new website called jfinder.com. jfinder.com. You can rent or buy or sell your home on the first of its kind Jewish real estate platform. On jfinder.com, you have access to hundreds of new listings with amenities you need categorized by neighborhoods you want to live in. So if you're looking to buy or sell in Bar Park, Catskills, Crown Heights, Flatbush, Monroe, Muncie, Queens, Williamsburg, Lakewood, Passaic, Linden, this site is for you. JFinder also includes commercial listings for both office space and retail in New York and New Jersey. Find a place that you'll call home. Head to jfinder.com and start searching for the place that you want to live. I know, Yaakov, you're working on starting a new community. Yeah, we're working on it. And, and hopefully we'll get it on the JFinder yeah, and start getting sure. some listings there. But this is such a great idea. I you- love it. And I'll tell you what I like about JFinder also. A lot of times you have... Jewish companies and trying to get out in the whether it's the tech world or just the world alone, and they kind of like they miss the boat a little. Like, but over here with JFinder, they really I mean, you go on the website, it's beautiful, it's easy to use, very well done, updated, really well done. Like, you, I, I sometimes don't, I'm not crazy about some like from websites because, like, okay, they, they, the, the company is great, but the website, the you just go on jfinder.com, you'll know they know what they're doing, momish up to date, like, it's the it's the Jewish Zillow. And it like is. Zillow is incredible. And like this is literally, if you're in any of those places that Nachi mentioned, even if you're not, take a look at JFinder. It's, yeah, and I think that like everyone's always looking to either buy or sell. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know, like if there's like a very small percentage of people that are living somewhere where like I'm set. Right, you know? right, right, and right. And if not you, then for your kids, you could rent, you could sell, you could buy, you could list, office, home. Head to jfinder.com and you'll find the place that you can call home. So, the first home that we did a podcast in was Rabbi <laughs> Nelson Sherman. You see, yeah, I like what segues. you did there, Rabbi Nelson Sherman. We that was the fr- uh, that wasn't the first episode that we traveled for. We no, traveled for Yom Tov Glazer. I said in a home, but the first home. Jfinder.com, yes. by the way, if you didn't go there, yeah. The first home that we traveled that we traveled to. I feel like every yeah. time we go to someone's home, we should have like a Jfinder. <laughs> like, I want to. I want to. We should actually. That's very <laughs> cool. Um, I do want to point out something. Um, there were a few guests that we we've had before, and they said, "Oh, I'm too busy. Just come." to my house and we're we, we try as hard as we can to do everything in the studio besides for the fact that all our equipment all our equipment is here yeah. at, literally the studio is set up for having the best quality audio um but it's also it, like this is the space that, consistency like, and we get people comfortable and and we we do have a certain it's good juju I, yeah no really um but we we do Make exceptions for someone less like Rabbi <laughs> Nelson Sherman, who's who's eighty over eighty five years old, I think already. Um, so yeah, obviously the Kavod that that happens and Kavod of just his age. Um, so yeah, we went to his home and the and origins of our of art scroll. It, it, it's just it just he he's one seeing, of those yeah. Seeing the Chumashim on his on his <laughs> shelf is just like a different level because he was involved in creating. One of I think the most Jewish things that exist since one of the most Jewish things. No. Uh yeah. It, it's 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 clear. That I think anyone listening knows Art Scroll literally has been transforming how we relate to Torah. They really make Torah so much. I know. I mean, I say we said uh, for ourselves in our personal lives, like. I could just open up a chumash now, and yeah, maybe I understand a lot of it, but there's a lot of words I still don't know, or they, even they, Rashi yeah. or arts, or, or think of the Daf Yomi. I mean, like art schools should probably be like they're probably have the biggest supporters of the Daf Yomi. Totally. Like really, like think of how many people are learning 
today, the DAF, because they have that ability, because Archworld makes it. I'd accessible. be hard pressed to not to, to find a, a Jew, either even a not from Jew that's you know on the path of, of discovering you know his his religion. Who, who's not affected by art scroll? We take it for granted in a way. We go into these shuls, you grab a sitter off the literally. shelf. You're literally using it's a staple. Art, you're it's like, using, oh yeah, art scroll. You're literally using an art, an art scroll sitter. Um, of course, a big, a big, you know, shout of respect to Mayor Zlato Satal, who yes, the founder of, of art scroll. One of those people that like we wish was. Still I alive. wish. I wish. Okay, Mayor Shlom Tchias Mason. We'll get him. But but like um yeah, it's uh, it's unreal. I think like <laughs> what they what they, what they've done. For like Rosh Hashanah and Kippur davening, the interlinear crazy, machsarim, crazy, and, and really crazy. Have you ever have you ever seen that? Like they're not the first to translate into English, at least, or translate to a different language. I'm saying, well, like you know, Rashi used to, you know, you look <laughs> in Rashi he says, oh, this is the translation in Worms, which is some French language. But um, so you're I've saying like art schools in modern day Rashi? Interesting. <laughs> no, not saying that at all. <laughs> um, they're great, but they're not Rashi. But um. I've seen before, I don't say before Archibald, but I've seen certain like, I think it was a Gemara that was translated, but it was translated in Old English. And it was, I mean, something here and there, you, Hard to read. you run into those it's words. It's easier to read Hebrew. Literally. Like, no, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. Yourself. So, so up, aside for a point that I don't know if you even mentioned, aside for just translating it, they really make it like user friendly that that I could understand the wording. Of, of course, there's yeah, like certain so Gamar. Their, their UI is incredible. <laughs> certain Gamar's you run into, and you're like, okay, I still don't know what the word, but they translate as well as they they really could. Um, and something we didn't mention with with Rabbi Sherman is, and we didn't because really, we were talking about Archel so much, but his his wife passed away a few years ago, and we we didn't even get to talk to him about um just. You know he's 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 a force. He's he doesn't he that doesn't stop, stop him. He doesn't he, stop. He's, he still works. He still works. I I I I give us the bracha that we'll be able to still be working and making <sighs> Klai Yisrael better at that. If at we could be doing 85. this when we're eighty five oh years gosh. old, holy cow! We're like okay, welcome to episode three million and fourteen. Someone do the math and email us. But tra- uh, transitioning onto our next guest, Rabbi Chaim Ariyev Ginsburg, who we were so blessed to be able to sit down with him. You know he's. One of the probably one of the signature COVID fights, you right. know, that's one of the flagship uh, survivors of, of COVID. Yeah, uh, he was so to you know, come out alive on the other end, and his story was just unbelievable. Believe it or not, the episode was not just about his bout with COVID, but no, not at his, all. His his work with Ol Sarla and and about his daughter's life and him being a rav. And him, being a rub, him, him being a him being a and a businessman, and there's yeah. there's so there's so much packed into this episode. Um, I I I got a lot. I mean, we always got a lot of messages, but specifically with that episode, I got a lot, and I know you also, Danachi, a lot of messages of people like this. This episode hit home. Like, I think it was you know I I I know Rabbi Ginsburg and his family personally. I know his kids, and you know we um, our families are are close. And I think. You know, when when we were middle of the, you know, obviously we're still in the middle of COVID, but when we were in the real the peak of it, uh, back in April time, everyone was so everyone who knows him and his family was so scared. Every Shabbos, every Yontif, when they would turn off their phone for more than a few hours, they were they were so scared to turn their phones on, and they were dreading you know the news they would hear. And I think it was like that. And obviously not with just him. There were so many people who right. we unfortunately lost. Yeah, but but right. he just. Baruch Hashem, hang on. He hanged on. He hung on. Right. And um, he came out. Came out on top. Um, and Baruch Hashem, he's doing. He's doing. He's doing great. He he. When he came in, he was still like limping a little. Right. Have you seen him recently? I have not. Oh, I don't know. Matt, I'm just asking. Priority like physically, one I don't know. Do with him? I I have not. Um, but just super, super, super blessed to be able to have done that episode with him. I was so happy, like yeah. genuinely happy. Someone pointed out, um, a friend Yona pointed out that he has a very Zeus laugh. <laughs> I, I don't. He recall. laughed a few times, and he's like, "He, I can't, I can't imitate it." But um, I tried it. All know, right, it failed guys. Miserably. If, if there's no other reason to listen to that episode, it's really <laughs> no. Check he out he his has Zeus a very Zeus laugh, like a few times he laughed in it. Um, so yeah, a big thanks to him. And uh, so we had the Bachners for a two-person episode, and then we had Zusha for a two-person episode. <laughs> Some background, what people don't know about the Zusha episode. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't even know what you're going to say. We get a call from Zach. Do you guys have a bottle opener? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, looking around now. Looking under, I'm looking at my desk. Not really. Okay, no problem. You see him pull up. He walks into Jacob Plus, buys a bottle opener, pops open a 
beautiful bottle of wine up here and we 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 began such an incredible sit down with them they're yeah. so they're so much fun um no i didn't really know that shlomo was six foot eight yeah uh, really which some people on youtube were like why are you guys making jokes about his height like because he's huge <laughs> and he's jewish no i know but they thought it was like offensive that we were making light of it light of him being tall i don't know i don't know like maybe I'm sorry we're poking come, fun. <laughs> don't at me but like come on come on come on that's not a thing what? making fun because he's six foot like that's incredible good for him <laughs> i know i know um yeah no so i just want to tell people like i mean we we did i mean a this lot is of sure like a whole support group of tall people <laughs> are like that's offensive cancel yeah, yeah, culture no. so cancel obviously Nahi. we we don't want i mean yes cancel not cancel not but Go um but yeah yeah we're, we're not making light of of his height i mean he is tall and we i'm were, totally making light of his height <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, we were, I, I can't tell if you're serious or not no, i don't know people are complaining i, I don't want to offend anyone but we're, we we were joshing around with him before and um he's totally about okay with being how tall he is yeah yeah yeah, 100 percent, 100 percent. and he said he, it was a struggle for him when he was younger um, I don't know if it was a struggle. No, meaning was, like whatever, just fitting in. It was but. something that, uh, yeah, it's a struggle. That's a struggle for him, just like me having red hair is a struggle for me. Ooh, we could. You want to delve into that? So, <laughs> so um, with them, they were both good. And after, I'm like, not yet, because it's still so soon. I, I want to have both of them back, but separately. Really? Yeah, I think they both. They're they're really. I mean, think about it. They they grew up very modern orthodox, and now they're like super not not modern. <laughs> I mean, they're like I don't know exactly. They're like Hasidish, cool. Well, they never know. Modern orthodoxy is a mindset, not necessarily the l- yeah, Lavush, but right. They're, no, they're, they're, they're just like looking Hasidish, at them aesthetically, yeah. like how they looked, uh, you know, fifteen years ago and today. It's very different, and and they they're both very deep guys. And deep thinkers. Shlomo Shlomo's like uh, he's got so much like on the tip of his tongue yes and he could quotes for him and and their their music like their knowledge and their connectivity with the torah is manifested through their music so so clearly so i so clearly i, I named my son uh connectivity y- no uh-huh. yosef alexander zisha after uh my uncle and um i i was i when we were doing the episode i, I meant my uncle already passed away and i had i did have a mind i didn't know if it was gonna be a boy or a girl but if it was a boy my wife and i had a mind that we'll name after my you uncle you really didn't know yeah, we didn't know the whole time. That is incredible. Yeah. Um, props to my wife. She really wanted to know. I'm like, no, no, no. Like, Are you serious? Please. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Class- it's classic Akulinger. That's Amir- classic. Amir- Amir- our next 16 kids will know. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, Gita. Uh, well, who knows? But um, <laughs> the point is, I, I had in mind, when, even when we're, we're talking to them, we're, the name Zusha came up. Obviously, it's. Um, going to clarify again it's not one of their names it is the name of a person that they named the band after right um but the name zusha why they named it that came up and i was like thinking like oh i might have a son with with that name and i i reached out to them after i had the baby i said i just want to let you guys know like that that's one of the names zusha is one of the names of uh, because of the episode yeah, no, no, but <laughs> meaning like you. Did. They named their band after Rav Zusha. Like yeah. it, it's clearly it means a lot to them. And uh, Shlomo was like, "Please, like, send me." I mentioned that he's like, "Send me a voice note of like why and like m- like he he wanted to hear so it." Deep. So, so deep. So he was very excited about that. Um, okay, Rabbi David M. Cohn Esquire, <laughs> Rabbi right, David M. Cohn Esquire, right. former Esquire. Yeah. Um, okay, so he he's he's. A guest that I I read his book and I'm like you read a lot. I don't, not at all. Okay, I mean, I, I, nah, you're saying I just read very I little. Read, I read Rabbi Doctor Benji's book and Rabbi Cohn's book. It's, it's not that much. It's yeah, two so. guests. So so Rabbi David M. Cohn, um, he he is a man of many hats. Whether he's you know talking about a rav or, or, or marriage doing counseling. marriage counseling or or talking you know being an advocate or being part of yachad right mm-hmm. uh, and his I mean crazy story with with how he got engaged. how he met his wife yeah how he met his wife it's so crazy um yeah really really a very genuine and easy to talk to person he's really he's he was great what do you think about that episode i thought i thought that there's an incredible story that is literally like listen to this episode even just to hear that story right about how how he met his wife and and him even being single into his you know older right. years and and there's just so much and how they deal with their special needs son yeah there's so there's so much there there's so much vulnerability which i love yeah. i love when guests get vulnerable with us mm. and they open up and that this episode is is really is really full of that and i think it's it's one that people should definitely you know it's possible you don't know him um but 
take the take the I don't know hour and ten minutes of that episode and and really listen and I think you're gonna walk away with a lot so, really so and I think the next episode yeah was our like next the, the clickbait of the year <laughs> it was our how many most people let me tell you something how many people episode? messaged you the night that we put that out first of all so this episode we're talking about is the one with her motion fine scene aka ali stern well um, no hold on wait you just said ali stern is from motion fine scene well in 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 the realm of this podcast <laughs> kind of was no because it wasn't about ali or uh rev ali well ali he's known as ali fine so maybe uh, either way yeah this episode was about the life of our motion fine scene and we sat down with a ben bias of his um ali stern um who lived with Ramusha for quite a few years. And we put out this episode, Matze Shabbos, that fri that that Friday, two days prior, um Rav Dover Feinstein's that's all passed away. Right. And Yaakov and I obviously we had recorded this episode literally months was, prior. Months summer, prior. I think even. And we were planning on putting out that the episode that Matze Shabbos. Yeah. So people were like message us like, whoa, like the timing is crazy. And I, we were, I, even, I even mentioned to you. I said I, we were talking about it. Like we were talking it, about not putting it you know, out. Like then. It maybe it's like disrespect. Like again, we we try to go about. We want to do the right thing always. So it was a thought, and and obviously we spoke to who we need to speak to, and we got the green light. Like no, it's okay. It's it's totally fine to put put this out. Monday that was, Shabbos. That was yeah, and and um, so we, we we put it out, and so many people messaged me. What? Yeah. What? Yeah, I know. What? It's like. You ever growing up and you're like you're reading like a newspaper or something and you're saying well, like what is this and your father says like well read it right you know like I was thought I was like well what is this I'm like well listen to it right, and right. you'll find out you know if we went to Moshe Feinstein's Kura <laughs> or if we had someone who lived with him and we spoke to them right I think uh, you meant caver what did I say like food like it means like him being buried great. <laughs> 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 everyone the lesson is we all make some mistakes every here and there yeah but hold on but but um ali was yeah he ali was, was so king. good he he's so good and and there really were like i i know i always say this but i i mean it every time there really was like an, uh, probably another 30 minutes of content that he had uh, probably four hours but <laughs> 30 minutes more that we would be interested of having about with him and riv moshe but there's only just so much like we can't i mean we can't but we don't i don't want to put out like a two and a half hour episode um, Most people think we should. Hmm. Yeah, and and you should know. Um, yeah, so so whatever. Mir uh, we we spoke to someone who spoke to Reb Ruvain Feinstein. This is in the summer, and Mir we're 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 gonna try to have him on. We're eyeing it. Um, we're eyeing and there's also I I, I I didn't even tell you this yet. Um, my brother told me that there's someone else who's also um, was very close to Reb Moshe really? and has a different perspective. So there. There's there's room to do that. We we have ideas of other gedolim that passed away that um if like someone who knows them personally or had what to do with them like I, I can't imagine what we're gonna do like an episode on like uh Moshe Rabbeinu like you know what I mean like how uh, no no I mean uh, how I'll give an idea of, we we get uh you know someone who who knows a lot of tyrants and massive tamachachem and say tell us everything about Misha which but is it's just an idea <laughs> but but I think that's a little too far out of it's our one realm. of your better ones <laughs> we're, we're we're gonna try sticking to obviously always foremost talking to people that are are with us and then certain gedolim that that uh we think um that we we have someone who had a very special connection to with them um moving on to Rebison Bubby. Shirley, Shirley Gross, Gross Puckwitz. She's amazing. Yeah. I don't know if I mentioned that maybe on the outro intro, but when, we, when you had dropped her off in front of the office and I went out to greet her and then I was walking with her to the elevator and she asked me if there were steps. Yes. She's 91 years old. Is she? 92? I don't no, I don't remember. I don't remember there. 1929. Yeah, she's 91. She's like, and she wanted to take the steps. Yeah. I was just like... I just had lunch. <laughs> I don't know so, if I can take the steps. So, um, yeah, she 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 gave a really great viewpoint on what it was growing up in America, which back, is which, back which then. I love because we so, we hear so much about what it was like in in Europe, in Europe in right? Shtetl, of course, and, 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 and which is important, which is super important, and, but, uh, and you can't get enough of. But to hear about what it America. was like growing up in America in like the '30s and the '40s as a young kid. Um, so so cool. Yeah, um, she is. She's someone who has been in Chinook for like sixty years. <laughs> you know, she's Sit more. She still is. Yeah, she's always in Chinook. Okay, so I once I, in Chinook, always in I saw her a few Shabbosim ago. Oh, did and you? She said two things to me. Um, 
first first she said she said i'm like oh thanks again she's like oh like i felt like i was talking to my two grandsons you guys were so cute i'm like thank you so much the second thing she said she's like oh had i known it would have gone out so much i wouldn't have done it i, I didn't realize how many people would be like hacking me up and uh we, we got a few messages um about um people asking for ali also um asking like oh could she come speak or be on a zoom to talk to a bunch of students um, shoot your shot <laughs> and um i i think this is a great time to mention 848-222-1110 amr pharmacy <laughs> i don't know because i wanted to mention them why is this time it's a always a great time. time oh yeah there's i mean every time in the episode is a great time i don't yes, know it's guys, came to my mind make now. sure make sure and again a big shout out to shaggy and mealy our our guys at amr pharmacy who have powered this podcast in a way like no other um they also happen to have one of the best pharmacies that exist <laughs> one of let's go let's go for it the, the best. best pharmacy yes. ever guys of course so head to amrfarmrx.com and guys we have to make a, a public service announcement if you see the amr truck please stop texting us pictures <laughs> <laughs> no adaraba no send keep on sending pictures i love it <laughs> don't uh, uh, Benny. uh don't text and drive but if you're you're not in the middle of driving yeah how many pictures have we gotten of their truck a lot. A lot. A lot. Every like like I know that truck by heart as well as I know that number but by heart. Yeah, we're making t shirts like I know AMR's pharmacy number by heart, but not my wife's. Like we're making t shirts oh, that on it. But but no guys, head to AMRPharmRx.com, A four eight two two eleven ten, the best pharmacy in the world. And I know I know people are listening and they're like, Oh yeah, it's nice. Guys, <laughs> girls, we have been saying this over <laughs> and over. And I know you I know you're listening to it. And you're like, No, I like my pharmacy. Try them out. Just try if them out. If you haven't ones. tried them, there's something wrong with you. Probably not because probably not, but but like in the, in, the, in the, like the sense of we've been talking about it so much. Like, yeah, we've been talking about it. Do so we much. get a favor here? Right, right, right. Call them up. Yeah. Our next guest, talk about selling things. Talk about marketing things the way we're doing the AMR. Kyla Kaufman is probably responsible for any campaign <laughs> messaging that you see. Yeah. Be it a WhatsApp status or a message or a magazine ad or a, a, a banner on Ishiva World. Or the Sima Shas, she's responsible for the messaging of that campaign, a big part of the success of that campaign. I'm sure she's been involved in raising hundreds of millions of dollars for different Moisdes with her talents and her skills. So, so yeah, that what that is obviously the clear, like easy, like whoa, of course we should have her on. But there's also a different angle that we 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 spoke about with her that not that she's the 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 you know only force behind it but you do have a lot of you know in today's society you have the father working and the mother working um to support a family and we really wanted the ability to talk to someone who's a mother um of a few children yeah and um quite a few and to have a successful business but also to to live that world of i'm i'm a i'm a businesswoman but i'm also a mommy at the end of the day which is in a chiddush as we see you right. know, it's 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 something that's able to be done, and um, there's just obviously more to juggle. You know. Yeah. Oh my she, gosh. Being she, a mother is is probably the hardest job in the world. Like. Yeah. Period. And then also, oh, you also have a whole nother job. So it was it was very, it was cool to see you know someone talk about that and just be open of like yeah, it's not easy. But she had, she had like a post on do. LinkedIn where she you had mentioned in the episode where. You know, her daughter was like scared of the bus because like I think she she didn't like she missed her stop once and she had gone on to the bus. And this is again, this is this is a woman who is extremely busy. Right. I, I deal with her a lot. There are times two AM she's working campaign campaigns and then again at seven AM wow. and she's running a big team and doing a lot. And she went on to that bus with her daughter and the rest of the kids on the, on, on going to to Basiaco that day or Yeshiva or whatever it was. And she taught everyone, all those kids, guys, when it's your bus stop, you have to get up and walk to the front. And she taught them like bus etiquette. And and that's just, it was like super like, you know, being able to juggle mm. business, motherhood, what's important. I think we're able to see a lot of that in this episode. And I want to point out that like only one person mentioned it. Like it was a little like constructive criticism and they were like comparing like someone like Kyla Kaufman to like Rabbi Bender or Rabbi Feiner. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, let, let me just put in context like what we're trying to do here. Our goal, and we'll talk a little more about this, uh, about our last episode that we put out. But our goal here is to really get everyone in Kalal Yisrael at a certain point 
and uh, every everyone is meaningful or could be meaningful in a certain way. And yeah, that means we're we're gonna we're. I would love to have a Gadol Adar, and then I would also love to have someone who's doing something incredible in their life, in their own way. So and and we're all living different lives, and we all look up to different people in different ways, and could get chizik and inspiration from different people. So just because we have one guest that's yeah. extremely meaningful in this way doesn't mean we can't have exactly. another guest that's extremely meaningful in exactly. a different way. So like. So yeah, and and people are selective sometimes about yeah. like which episodes they listen to, and that's fear. Um, but just keep in mind, like, there's no comparison. There's no that one's better than this one. Like, we're all different people, and we all have oh, a different story. A big puzzle. And yeah, we need all the pieces. Yeah. Speaking of pieces, right? We're not coming to sell. Oh, <laughs> I like that. What a piece, <laughs> in a good way. Yeah. So yeah, he he he. Okay, first of all, anytime we have someone with an accent, that's a win. That's is a it? win. Yeah, they sound. No offense to Americans, I'm, I'm kind of like, or especially New Yorkers, we don't sound smart. Let's let's be honest. You they, get you get someone with an accent in there already. It's like whoa, like where are they from? Definitely is a plus. Like it definitely you know gives them an advantage in he, terms of sounding smart. He was smart. the most drastic episode. Like it was like drastic. Yeah, we're talking about like oh like funny, silly, this, that, and it's like boom. And, yeah, the story with his mother. It's, it was it was it was crazy. It was crazy. Crazy, crazy episode. Crazy story. Definitely go ahead and, and give that a listen. There's so much that he does. And, and he's actually extremely funny also. He has a great sense of humor. He's very funny. He is very funny. Yeah. One of my favorite episodes. Yeah. Are we yeah. Doing, yeah. Reb Joey Newcomb. Joey Newcomb. Yeah. My favorite episode. Seriously, my favorite episode. I... I just, well, you're announced... This was your favorite? I think so. Really? I think so. Wow. He was because I I don't I don't have one, but but yet. Oh no. No, I don't think so. So far. Hold I mean, on. You're hold on. Whoa, this is very big. I, I wanna today, I wanna delve into this. Today it's my okay. favorite episode. Really? Today it's my favorite episode. Because there there is something so real about him. He what he does is who he is. The songs he writes, the way he sings them. Ah. He's his music also is just so engaging, and it's so it's just it's such a you know I it sound like I'm a broken record in in regards to like what I said with Zusha, but but Joey Newcomb and his chopped his chopped analogy is probably one of the best like analogies that were ever mentioned on our podcast. That was like so good. So many people gave us feedback on oh that chopped thing yeah. that he said was, was so very awesome. Good, very good muscle. Uh yeah, he was very. He was very easy to talk to, like you know what I mean. I mean, not that certain people aren't, but he was just like one of the guys. First of all, yeah, we mentioned this that I didn't know like, he he seems so much older just in terms of like experience and like yeah, he's only, I mean, he's two years older than me. I'm like what? Uh yeah, Rev Joey, Rev Joey Newcomb is great, and he's putting out so much, and I and I think I think um he's gonna be even bigger and even more famous than in 10 years from now than, than he is today because people just eat up his music, eat up who he is, eat up his inyanim, and uh, for good reason. The next episode we got, we had a funny voice note in response yes. to our next episode. Okay. He, Yaakov, I got permission to play this, this. This this is a friend of Yaakov or someone who Yaakov knows who, the next episode that we had was, I'm not going to say yeah, it. Yeah. His, last name, his last name was Weiss. Yeah, let's play this voice note. Yaakov, I love you very much. It's very late at night here, but I'm listening to the podcast right now i gotta tell you please you and nachi i don't know nachi at all but you guys gotta stay away from anything with hasidish accents pais whatever you butchered paisach and klasenberg it's klosenberg if you can't say it don't say it please it's very cringy i'm sorry one second, is cringy a word? I just want to call him on. <laughs> so that was my friend Yechiel all the way from America. Kle- well. Kleisen- Kle- Kleisenberg. No, I don't think you said it right. Uh, so Yechiel, sorry again. Um, but yeah, sorry, uh, Pesach, for butchering your name. or And or, sorry for everyone, Hasidish or not Hasidish, if we ever butcher uh, any word, we apologize for that. So Pesach Weiss was... His episode was our season finale. Yes, um, we have these these two episodes just going through them to give our our feedback. Um, but I I think it was very special that we had Pesach as our season finale, and I'll say like this: we we had a lot of guests that someone knows them in some capacity, whether you know they're a rav in a shul or they're 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 
um, helping a lot of women on Instagram or they're, you know, head of an organization, right. whatever it is. Like they have, uh, people know them. And not to say that people don't know Pesach. People do know Pesach. It gets out there. Um, but at the end of the day, he he's our most ordinary person, but also our most extraordinary person. The fact that we could have someone on who who has a, you know a horrible disease, and he could be so open about it. And Bar Hashem, thank you Hashem, that we're at the point where we could start putting out episodes where not everyone knows who this person is, and they say, you know what, let me listen because you know what, I listen to others. And Bar Hashem, we got such incredible feedback. Uh, literally this morning, I, I email. I sent you the email of someone saying, "Like you should know, I have a child also who who medically, you know, struggles with certain things, and and it it's it, it really feels like a blessing and a bracha and a privilege for for us to be able to sit down with all these people um, and to be able to talk to them about what they go through and uh, yeah, Pesach. He he's great. He's so cool. Such he a cool is, guy. He is, and it's it's something that you touched upon, which. I, I look forward to doing more often where we sit down with people that maybe don't know this person as much or he doesn't have um, the biggest of names. And I think there's so much to be drawn from so many people like that. And and maybe with season two, um, which Jakob and I are, you know, we're working so hard on, we hope to highlight people like Pesach who are, who are just in the way they live their day-to-day -day lives are extraordinary. And there's, Many people like that. You right. might, you might be, you might be one of them. Right, right. Yeah, you listening. Um, I think someone. I don't know if I mentioned this, but if I if I did, I'm gonna chazer. Uh, someone said that um, their child was listening and said, "One day, I want to be on Meaningful People." Oh yeah. Like that made me like so like ah, uh, that's so nice. Would you, would you listen to Meaningful People if you weren't the co-host? One hundred percent. Yeah. It's... Well, unless like the co-host was like someone you didn't like, like like a, a yeah terrible like evil person, then I'd be like oh, I don't know about that. But um yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Uh, would you? Yeah, I think so. I I love... I think I'd faster listen to it than love... you would listen to it. Is that is Could that accurate? Be, maybe consistently, maybe consistently. Right. Like you would you would be more on top of you know the newer episodes. I love podcasts in general. You know, I love listening to different to different podcasts. It happens to be when I nowadays when I drive in a car, <laughs> um, I don't turn on our podcast. <laughs> I well, it, 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 I mean, we, we do listen to. I listen to it every here and there if I'm with my wife or something. Who did so listen to it? I'll watch them. I won't listen to them. really. I won't listen to them. I'll watch them. Like if I, yeah, if I'm, if I want to go through an episode and see a few different parts, I'll watch it. It's a very I'm more of a, I'm more of a visual. We have a person. very split audience. A lot of people love watching it and they wait the few extra days, and so people like listening. And by the way, I just want to make that clear. We, it's harder and it takes longer to edit a video than the audio, so that's why we're able to have the audio out first. I mean, I have to be happy about it because I do want. Like our focus is the podcast, and yeah, it's on the YouTube. Podcast naturally the, is audio, exactly. So, um, but but yeah, so we 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 try to get it out Monday Shabbos on uh, audio, and then on Tuesdays on YouTube. We're not always perfect, um, so so please don't hurt us. Let's talk about next year a little. Okay. Um, so season one is uh, you know, twenty twenty was season one, and we're gonna look at season two as twenty twenty one. We're we're probably gonna take a little of a break right now, right? To, yeah. To, probably a few weeks just to, you know, catch our breath, spend yeah. some time with the fam, so, go see the Alps. <laughs> so we we started this back in 2019, right? Yeah. Um, recording a bunch of episodes. So really, 2021 should be season three. Technically, well, we didn't put it out yet. This is awkward. So 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 we put out and we said, okay, great, and we'll have a bunch. We'll release it around like uh, our goal was around Pesach time. We wanted to load up like 10, 15 exactly. episodes, so we could don't have to like be you know killing ourselves every single. week week so we're gonna try to and then obviously COVID hit we weren't ready for that and we, um, had, we had just and we, i mean we were i think we started releasing these episodes at the perfect time you know people it was like COVID time and and uh, people were home and you know i think um, it was cool it's cool that we recorded it was great, yeah it was great that we were able to put out fresh new content that wasn't COVID related i think there was so much overexposure to people hearing updates 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 they just needed content that wasn't COVID. And we literally, uh, our first like eight guests, we literally did it before COVID. Yeah, months before. Yeah, so it wasn't even a thing. So yeah, next year, we're still trying to figure out our schedule. We might do three times a month as opposed to every single week. Uh, for for avid listeners who are like diehards, please don't kill us. Um, it's just there's- A lot of killing. 
yeah please don't hurt us is that better no it, it, i I'll explain the reason for that. Um, obviously, we've been pushing very hard to do this every single week with exceptions every here and there. But um, it really gives us, the, A, the ability to... There's, I mean, not how big is our list of people that we're Huge. in the middle of talking and, you know, there's to. A lot, there's a lot of, of, of groundwork that we need to be able to do to get to those guests that we need to do and um it's not it's I, I i it's like people think like oh you just sit down with someone and you talk to them the talking part is is obviously most fun and the easiest part but getting someone a, a lot of people we're talking to their schedules are so crazy and you know our schedules sometimes are crazy and getting everyone in the same room doing the proper research getting the editing done in time all of that takes so much time so um we're you know we're always focused on quality over here it's it's i mean we're, we've had a lot of quantity also yeah um but so yeah moving forward we, we really have a few few home oh, yeah. run type of people coming up we're so. very excited about season two we got some like we have some episodes coming up that are going to be insane yeah. they're gonna be incredible but it's a shame this is something that we hope to do for many many years yeah long long longevity. at least at least another year at least until, <laughs> okay, okay. At least until 85 but um this is uh, we're in it for the long for the long game, so we're always gonna be you know going out there trying to get the best guests possible. And, and I'm gonna interrupt for a second. If you have an idea, we have on our website a place to submit an idea. We we get a lot of times through Instagram or someone WhatsApps us or someone emails us, which we always appreciate. Uh, but it's just best to send in the submissions through that form just so we could keep track and and we see it all. Even if we don't respond to you, we really do see it all and. And we're, we're limited. We're just two guys. At the end of the day, we we um we try to get to everyone, and um we we really love your love and your support. Oh, and when you share the episodes, um and you put on your family chats, um an idea. I mean, we didn't talk about it so much, but I, I want to like give out a phone number for meaningful people that will be able to share with with you, and you could share on your status with uh your friends and family, um so they could see it when it comes out because. I, I meet a lot of people that say like, you know, I, I, the podcast always comes up in some form of like conversation and a lot of times people just don't know about it. And then I tell them and they listen and they're like, oh, wow, this is great. Like, they just don't know about it yet. Right. So the more you share, the better it is for us and the more people that see it. The main the way that you can could... give back to us is by sharing it with at least a couple of friends. Yeah. That's it. And, yeah. and you know, guys, this is our last episode of season one, um, but we are coming back and we can't wait for you to hear our voices again yeah we're, and see our faces on YouTube if you're watching um, don't forget that you are meaningful beautiful ciao